Rub up your engines! Chao Frost, what's the worst thing about a Toyota Matrix? I love them, but the worst thing is they do have a somewhat rough ride. That was their kind of sports wagon. It's not a true SUV, and the suspension is relatively rough. Now, it's set up for going real fast. I love it. I put fancy shocks, motorcycle design ones on my wife's, and I love it. It handles like a dream, but truthfully, you take it on a long distance ride, it's a lot rougher than the Lexus that we got. It's so much smoother. Whenever we go more than 50, 60 miles, we'll get an Lexus. We're not going to drive the Matrix on long distances because they are relatively rough rides when you hit bumps and stuff. Dawes King, Scotty, how can I soup up an 03 Honda Civic with 220 20,000 highway miles on it. Okay, well, if it's really 220,000 highway mileage, realize highway mileage, pure highway driving, is equivalent to about 10% of the wear of stop and go city. So that's kind of like you got a 22,000 mile city driving. So it's still got a lot of life in it. Here's the thing about souping up vehicles, though. Three ways of going about it. One is rebuilding the engine, pistons, bigger valves, cost a fortune. Most guys aren't going to do that on a Civic. The other two are either put a supercharger or a turbocharger on it. If you want to spend that kind of money, put a supercharger on it. It's easier. They run turbochargers on cars from the factory because the turbochargers actually are rated higher for gas mileage, so they all do it. But then you got to modify the exhaust system and all kinds of stuff. The supercharger, you can get bolt on supercharger kits and software. So if you do want to spend the kind of money, put on a supercharger. I don't know if you want to spend that kind of money, though. It's not cheap. William 1996. I found an 08 Volvo V50 with 66,000 miles for $6.9,000 on Craigslist, but it's three owners. I'm real leery about a car that's already had three owners. I just am. Now, if they can actually positively prove it only has 66,000 miles on it, those can be good cars. The older Volvos were good cars, and 66,000 miles is nothing on one of those things. Why have three people owned it, and it's only got 66,000 miles? I would be worried there was wrecked, flooded, stolen. I would want some serious research and proof. And the problem with proof is, as I've said many times, things like Carfax, you can't believe them. I've had customers bring me used cars. An idiot could see they'd been wrecked, and Carfax says they've never been wrecked. So you can't really believe that stuff. But if you can get some kind of proof, and find a guy like me to test it for it before you buy it. It could be a decent car. I'd just be real leery about it, having three previous owners. Pretty Gertie Man says, I'm thinking about buying a Mercedes-Benz 190E from the late 80s to early 90s, my first car. They made great cars back then. I used to work on a lot of 190s. Those things would run forever if you took care of the things. I would stick to the 80s. Some of the 91s had some serious problems. If it's a project car, great. You know, you can still get parts for them. And it's, sure, it's Mercedes, but those old ones like that, you can get from aftermarket parts, a lot of stuff for them. But don't pay much. They have no resale value. If you can find one that's still running decently, go ahead, have it as a toy. Just don't pay too much and stick to the 80s. The 90s, daddy started to get a bit crappier then. Mr. Sims Jr., and he says, I got a problem with my brake system. I'm driving around, and sometimes it just sinks to the floor. I pull off the wheel. There's no leaks. I even changed the brake master cylinder, and it does the same exact thing. What could be wrong? Well, generally, it's one of two things. Either you got a problem in your analog brake system, or you got a problem in the brake booster. Now, if you don't have, if you got a really old car, it doesn't have ABS, change the booster. And here's how you can test most boosters. Turn the car off. Step on the brake. If it's nice and hard, doesn't sink, then start it up. And if you start it up, and then you step on the brake with the engine running and it sinks, you got a bad booster. Now, unfortunately, with most cars these days having ABS and a brake system, the analog brake system can make them sink too because it's got a brake modulator system that can open the valves so the ABS system works, and if they stick open, it will sink like that. Then, unfortunately, you're going to have to pay a mechanic like me to put his big giant scan tool and fool around with it because it gets really complicated then. This year, 524. Scotty, what are your thoughts on a 99 Toyota Camry with 300,000 miles for a thousand bucks? I'd pay less. <laughs> you get in a car with a third of a million miles, you get no guarantees, la da la da. Let's say it's really clean and the seats aren't torn and it runs good and the AC still works. Ah, 
buy, you might as well pay the thousand bucks if the guy won't come down. But I learned how to buy cars from my grandfather, who was also a mechanic, and he was a horse trader when he was a kid. He grew up in the country and actually did trade horses. And he taught me how to buy cars. You never pay the asking price. You always offer less. Try to find things that are wrong. But if it's whistle clean and it runs good, a thousand bucks is nothing these days. But I try to pay 500 myself. I had a customer just buy one for 500. As he says, uh, I'm uh, thinking about buying a used electric car, a Nissan Leaf. I'm not a big electric car fan, but I have customers with a Nissan Leaf and they've been happy with them. And realize one thing about electric cars, they have pretty poor resale value. I just met a guy who bought a Tesla Model S, the original owner, paid $123,000 for that car. It had 10,000 miles on it and he paid $44,000. He paid like one third of what the new one cost and it only had 10,000 miles on it. There's nothing wrong if you do want an electric car and you buy a used Nissan Leaf, you're gonna get it cheaper. There's no if, end, or but. They're bad resale values and they can last. Like I say, I got customers with the Leafs and they like them. I'm not a fan myself, but if you want to get an electric car, go ahead. Those are pretty well built ones. Realize they don't have that far of a range. Make sure that you're happy with the range first though. Don't buy it and then find out, oh, geez, this thing only went 70 miles and they ran out of power. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.